Hi everyone, uh, this is a blog about honey extraction, the process by which we get uh, honey out of the hives and we do it twice a year normally. Um, the first time is in May, second time in August. Now in May, for beekeepers who have oilseed rape in the area, they have to be quite careful because the honey that the bees produce from oilseed rape goes hard very quickly and uh, you have to keep an eye on the frames to monitor the honey as it's uh, developing and get it off as soon as it's ready and you don't wait you don't leave it you can't be bothered to do another day you get it off because otherwise the honey goes hard inside the frames and it gets very difficult and messy to, to get it out the other time August uh, the reason it's done then is because the beekeepers are perhaps depressingly uh, prepping their bees for the winter and they will do the autumn varroa treatment and the treatments are mostly based on a substance called thymol which is based on thyme, the herb and a thymol uh, passes its smell and taste into the honey now it's not unpleasant bees certainly don't dislike it but for beekeepers who are selling their honey uh, this will be an issue I'm not one of them but if you are selling your honey, you want it to smell of honey and not of fine. So what happens is that in, in August time, uh, once things are beginning to slow down a little bit, you will take all the supers off and extract the honey, and then you'll do the, the uh, varroa treatment. The varroa treatments depend on the weather being fairly warm, uh, so that the thymol evaporates and the fumes pass around the hive, to um, treat the varroa. So that's the reason, that's the reason we normally do it uh, twice a year. Now uh, there's actually three I think sort of components of it. First one is identifying the frames that are ready to be extracted. Uh, secondly is getting the bees out of the frames that you want to extract the honey from. Not an easy job. And then finally there's the physical uh, extraction of the honey from the frames using a, a spinner. Now this video is going to be about two parts of that. Uh, firstly identifying the frames so you know that the frames are ready to be taken out. Secondly how uh, the bees are uh, got out of the frames, lots of different ways of doing that. And I'll do another blog about physically extracting the honey from the frames. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, first off, I think maybe we could look at the construction of a uh, standard beehive. So you can see how certain aspects of how it's put together are there to help beekeepers get their honey out of the hive. So, let's go. This is a standard uh, national beehive and it's got two main compartments the bigger box at the bottom here is uh, called the brood box and this smaller box here is called a super and sometimes you'll see uh, two or three of these things stacked on top now the brood box on the bottom is where the queen uh, is and she will lay her eggs into the cells here and these uh, eggs develop into larvae and pupae and eventually the bees emerge. Also on these frames you'll find around the brood a sort of like a halo of pollen and pollen is what the young bees are fed on. Uh, there will also be honey usually on the signs around here. Uh, the egg laying tends to go on in the middle here and the outer frames here will have honey, uh, which is made by the, uh, the worker bees. Now above the uh, brood box goes one of these things, which you should both recognize as being a queen excluder. And these slots here are wide enough to allow the workers to get through, but not the queen because she's bigger. So when this goes on top here, the queen is contained in this section of the hive and on top of it goes a super and in here are very similar frames only only smaller 
and so the worker bees can get through that mesh into this upper chamber and make honey. So what you'll finish up with is a lower box here with the uh, eggs and larvae and brood and all the rest of that sort of stuff and pollen which we're not interested in and honey but up here is just pure honey so these are the supers that we take off to extract. And next we'll have a look at a hive just to see uh, how these things look at look like rather um, in real life. When honey is being extracted it's important to do it at the right time in that the honey has to be ready uh, to, to be extracted. Now I think if you ask most people how do bees make honey they'll say nectar which is actually the answer to the question what do bees use to make honey rather than how do they do it. Now it's quite a complicated process and I will be doing a blog about this at a later point but uh, essentially uh, what happens is that they will take the nectar, uh, they will process it, they change the sugars in the nectar, they change the water content and then eventually when it's absolutely okay that's when um, they cap it over for the winter or we extract it. So we'll have a look at some of the frames first and I'll show you one that isn't ready then I'll show you one that is. Now, when you look at a hive, um, the, the frames in the middle are always the ones that are full and you can probably see that from, from uh, the camera angle. Now, the ones that tend not to be full are the ones at the end. So if I take this one out, you'll see that on that side there's absolutely nothing in terms of honey. On this side, it's difficult probably to see but this is full of nectar it's very liquid the bees very cleverly build their comb at an angle of 14 degrees because nectar is very watery and would fall out uh, so this is at an angle and um, even though it's watery it'll stay in there however if I look at the next one You'll see there how it's gone white and in the next one you'll see how the whole frame is what's called capped off. What happens the bees when they have processed the nectar and uh, the sugars are the way they want them and the water content is the way they want them. This is food for their winter. Uh, so they spend the summer building up food for the winter like squirrels and then once they are happy that it's okay they take a little bit of wax, make a little bit of wax and they cap what's called cap it over. So each little hole becomes a cell full of honey for them ready for the winter. So. It's actually very easy to tell when honey is about to be extracted, or can be extracted, rather. it's when it's like this. Now, there is something which some beekeepers uh, mention, which is what they call the shake test. And basically what they mean is that if I shake this hive, if nothing comes out, then the honey is processed and is ready to go. Now, um, fairly obviously, the nectar is gonna come out. Uh, so I think just looking at it is as good a test as any. So, that's at the stage where this frame can be taken out, uh, sorry, this super rather can be taken out. This frame here isn't ready and I'm going to leave it for them for their winter feed. Hi everyone, um, we are at school end today to start clearing the frames uh, of bees to get the supers back home and get the honey extracted. Uh, there are perhaps inevitably lots of different ways this can be done. One way is to use this thing which is just a simple little brush and to brush all the bees off the frames. Uh, this always seems a bit of a brutal way of doing things. I think all it does is piss the bees off um, and all they're going to do is come back again. So I don't use um, a brush to do this. 
Another thing you can use is this, which is called a porter escape, and it's got a hole in there. And the idea is the bee will go through that hole. Uh, it's in the super, needs to get out and do whatever it needs to do. So this is the only way you can get out of the super. And underneath the thing, there are some springs in here, which means that once the bee has gone through, it can't get back in again. Now, the thing about these things is that if you imagine there are a large number of bees uh, in the super, and only one of them can leave at a time, it's going to take a long time to do it. So I don't use these either. Uh, sort of a, an alternative uh, to the porter escape is to have this thing, which is a giant porter escape. And I'll just bring it up to the camera so you can see what it is. And this is called a rhombus, and you use it to make a rhombus board. And the idea here is much the same in that this is a much bigger hole and the bees can go through here in larger numbers but once they get through and start working their way through here it narrows which means the bees can't get back in again. Now I have used these things and I know people who use them. Um, they are quicker than a porter escape but um, hmm, they still take a long time. I have used them and I can't say I'm particularly impressed with them so I have a different way of doing it. So, uh, what we're going to do is we are going to take the honey from this hive today and I'll set things up and then we'll get going. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that super that's on top there, take it off and put it down on top of this thing down here. And then on top of the frame, I'm going to put something that has a liquid on it, a chemical which the bees don't like. Uh, and the effect of it is it'll force the bees away. They don't like the smell of it, uh, so they'll just leave and they won't have very far to go from down there back to the hive over there. I think if you put this chemical on top of the hive, uh, it gets all the way through the hive so all the bees get pissed off rather than just the ones that are in the super. So let's get underway. When I had a look at the hive that uh, I said we were going to do, uh, it wasn't a great example of what we uh, really wanted to show here so I've moved on to another hive. Uh, again it's in school end but this one is uh, a lot fuller and I'll just show you what a frame looks like. I know we've done this before but they stung me. There we are. Okay, you can see that's full of honey and they are all like that in the super so uh, what I'll do is I'm going to lift the super off and put it down onto the uh, little contraption I showed you before and then we'll uh, get underway again. So I've got the super off the hive I'll put it on this little stand thing and on top of it I put this is just a wooden frame with some uh, some cloth on it put it on top next is the magic ingredient ingredient rather it's what's called be quick and uh, according to the label it's a blend of natural occurring things and uh, it is non-toxic although for some reason the bees really don't like it now i think hang on so i was just what do you think it's marzipan isn't it yeah so um what uh, you do with this stuff is just spray it on this and i can hear them 
saying, we don't like this. They really don't like it. And the bees will start, hopefully, as they are, coming out from here. And to encourage them a little bit, that metal goes on top, metal roof, and just to help the evaporation, There you go, and they're coming out. They clearly don't like it very much. So we'll leave this for a little while, let them evacuate the area, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay, this is about uh, 10 minutes later. Oh, not even that, and there are lots of bees there, and at the bottom and around the side here. Yep. And uh, they're a bit confused. Now, if we have a look inside the super, take that off, take that off. There's hardly a bee there. Isn't that great? They're probably minorly. Uh, Put out, but boy, is this better than brushing them and pissing them off. So there we are. Uh, that's that's the super extracted that I'm going to take home. And part two of this uh, vlog will be how physically the honey is taken out of the uh, frames. Uh, but while we're here, this is the same hive. There's another super absolutely full of honey and full of bees so next up is going to be this one okay thanks for watching